Have you ever wished you could just, you know, talk to your documents, mm. not just search keywords, but really have a conversation, like ask a PDF to explain something complicated. Or summarize a massive report. Yeah, exactly. It's that AI promise, right? But usually there's a catch. Often it means sending your private stuff off to who knows where. To some cloud server, yeah. yeah. That's the default these days. Well, today we're diving into something that offers a different path, maybe bringing that AI power right back to your own desktop. We're unpacking anything LLM from Mintplex Labs. Okay. Our goal here is pretty clear. Figure out what makes this tool special in, let's be honest, a very crowded field. Especially when you hear a reviewer call it, and I quote, the best free local AI tool in 2025. That's quite a claim. It is. So we'll look at the features, the privacy setup, and really try to pin down who this is actually for. And it's coming at a really interesting time. I mean, so many AI tools now, they want your credit card up front. Or like you said, they just hoover up your data before you even know if the tool's any good. Right. It's frustrating. It is. <laughs> and anything LLM seems to be taking a different approach right from the start. That local first idea, mm. that's a big deal, a real differentiator. Absolutely. And we'll definitely dig into that privacy angle. But let's start with the basics. What is anything LLM? Okay. So at its core, it's a desktop app. It's designed so you can run, well, pretty much any AI model locally. Mm -hmm. And the main use case is chatting with your own documents. It's from a company called Mintplex Labs. And importantly, it's completely open source. MIT license. Ah, MIT. That's permissive. Exactly. And the thing that really jumped out both to us and our sources is that the desktop version, it's free. Totally free. Totally free. Which as one review put it, makes it more honest than 90% of AI tools that want your credit card before you even know what they do. <laughs> That's a good line. Yeah. But it rings true, doesn't it? It signals a certain transparency right away. It really does. And that MIT license you mentioned, that's actually quite significant beyond just being open source. It's permissive. What does that mean in practice? Well, it means individuals get the free desktop tool, obviously. But it also means bigger organizations, like enterprises, mm -hmm. can take anything LLM and build it into their own internal systems, their own workflows. Ah, without major licensing headaches. Precisely. They can use it with their sensitive internal data without getting tangled up in restrictive license agreements or compliance issues. That kind of flexibility is uh, pretty crucial if you want businesses to actually adopt something like this. It opens doors that other licenses might keep shut. Okay, that makes sense. So it's not just for like hobbyists tinkering at home. Not at all. It's built with broader application in mind, even if the free version is the entry point. Got it. And speaking of sensitive data, this is really where anything LLM seems to make it stand. It's Well, it's kind of refreshing, actually. How oh, so? The fundamental idea is that everything runs locally by default. Okay, local first. Right. So for you listening, think about what that means. Your documents, they don't leave your computer. Yeah. The chats you have with the AI about those docs processed right there. No sending data off to third party servers. Exactly, and they talk about telemetry, you know, that anonymous usage data software sometimes collects. Yeah, always a bit iffy that. Well, they do include it by default, but, and this is key, you can switch it off, one click. One click disable. That is revolutionary. It shouldn't be, but it kind of is, right? That level of explicit control is rare. It really brings up this whole uh, critical issue of data sovereignty, especially now with AI everywhere. Data sovereignty, meaning who actually owns and controls your information. Exactly. Where does it live? Who gets to see it? This local first approach isn't just a neat feature. It's, um, it's a fundamental shift, mm -hmm. particularly if you're dealing with proprietary stuff, confidential information, personal data. For individuals or companies? Both. It's about keeping total control. Your data stays in your environment unless you explicitly decide otherwise. That has huge implications, you know, for security, for compliance like GDPR, and just for basic trust. Absolutely. And the control extends beyond just where the processing happens. It's also about what you can process. The flexibility is... Well, it's really impressive. What kind of documents? Pretty much anything you can think of. PDFs, obviously, Word docs, CSV files for data analysis, even entire code bases. Code bases, wow. Yeah, imagine chatting with your code, asking it to explain a function or find bugs, or asking a dense technical manual to simplify a section. That's powerful. But it gets better. You're not stuck with just one AI model, one brain. Ah, so you can choose. You can use almost any model you want. It supports local models, like ones you might run yourself using tools like Alama or LM Studio. Okay, the self-hosted ones. Right. But it also connects to cloud APIs. So 
OpenAI's models, GQSF4, et cetera, Anthropic's Claude models, basically everything. No vendor lock in that. None. You're not tied to one company's pricing, their specific way of doing things, or their potential biases. You pick the AI that sits the task, or your budget, or your preferences. And that level of flexibility, I mean, that's incredibly empowering for the user, isn't it? Totally. You're not just using AI. You're essentially curating yeah. your AI toolkit. You're tailoring the experience. Yeah. Maybe you use a small, fast, local model for quick summaries. Right, just quick tasks. And then maybe switch to a big, powerful cloud model like GBD4, Cloud3 for really deep, nuanced analysis. Mm -hmm. That ability to mix and match, to optimize based on the job or cost or even ethical viewpoints about certain models, that's a massive step away from these uh, monolithic AI services that just give you one option. Take it or leave it. It puts the control back where it belongs, really, with the user. Exactly. It lets you customize your intelligent assistant in a way that just wasn't easily possible before for most people. So that sounds great in theory. Customization, local control. But how hard is it to actually get running? Is this one of those things only developers can use? Good question. Often the setup is the killer. Right. But here, apparently, the setup is genuinely no code. That's what the reviews emphasize. A go code. Yeah. Mm. You download the application, install it like any other desktop app, point it to your models, or use their built-in support and start chatting. Okay. Built-in support. What does that mean? It means they have integrated ways to run local large language models, LLMs, directly within anything LLM. You don't necessarily need to install separate software or mess around with command lines just to get a local model working. Ah, oh, that's huge. Isn't it? I mean, I've personally spent days sometimes just trying to get a stable local AI environment configured, if this simplifies that. That removes a massive barrier to entry. Exactly. It seems designed to be, you know, pretty much plug and play, smooth. Oh. Intuitive. And we just step back for a second. That ease of use you're describing, it's absolutely critical. It's maybe the most critical factor for getting widespread adoption of these kinds of powerful tools. Because the tech is useless if nobody can figure out how to use it. Precisely. Yeah. There are so many potentially amazing AI tools out there that just languish because they need a computer science degree to set up or they have a really clunky interface. Yeah. Anything LLM focusing on a smooth, intuitive experience that lowers the barrier dramatically. It means these powerful local AI capabilities aren't just for the tech elite or early adopters anymore. It democratizes access. Makes sense. So it's easy for individuals. It respects their privacy. Great. But what if you're working in a team? Does it scale up? Does it have team features? It does, apparently. It includes multi-user support and, importantly, proper isolation between users. Ah, so my documents are separate from my colleagues. Exactly. Plus admin controls and even white labeling options. So a business could integrate it and make it look like their own internal tool. Okay, that's thinking bigger picture. What about cost for teams? Well, the desktop is free, but they do have a hosted version for teams. Our source mentioned it starts around $50 a month. $50 a month for a team. Yeah, which the reviewer described as uh, reasonable compared to enterprise AI tools that charge per sneeze. Huh, I like that. It's often true enterprise pricing can be astronomical. $50 sounds very competitive. It does, and there's more to the ecosystem. They have a community hub. Ooh, what's in the hub? People can build and share extensions, custom agents. Custom agents. Yeah. Like specialized AIs. Yeah. Think of an AI tuned specifically for reviewing legal documents or maybe one for helping with medical notes or even creative writing prompts, things like that. Plus useful shortcuts like slash commands. So it's building a whole platform around it. Seems like it. It's not just about using one generic AI. It's about enabling people to build and share tailored AI solutions for specific tasks. And that scaling, you know, from the free private tool for one person mm -hmm. all the way up to a secure collaborative environment for teams, that shows some really thoughtful design. Mm -hmm. They've clearly considered different user needs. A solo researcher has different requirements than a small company or a large enterprise department. Right. And that community hub you mentioned. That's a really positive sign. It suggests the tool isn't static. It's alive. It's growing. Users are actually invested in improving it and adding to it. That often leads to a much better, more versatile tool in the long run. Okay, so this brings us to the million-dollar question, or maybe the zero-dollar question. Since the desktop app is free. Huh, right. For you listening, do you actually need this? Especially if you're already using something like ChatGPT+, Plus, maybe occasionally uploading a document there. Yeah, if you're happy with that workflow. Our source basically said, 
Maybe not. If that works for you, stick with it. But there's always a but. There's always a but. If you regularly work with sensitive documents, things you absolutely cannot send to OpenAI or Anthropic or Google. Client data, financial records, internal strategy memos. Exactly. Yeah. Or if you really value that model flexibility we talked about, being able to swap AIs in and out. Or maybe test different models on the same document. Yes. Or if you need that secure team collaboration without, again, pushing all your internal knowledge out to a public cloud. Then it starts to look very appealing. Then it makes a lot of sense. The feedback is, the interface is clean, the privacy is, as we said, refreshing, and the cost. Well, it doesn't require selling organs, as the reviewer put it. That's always a plus. But it highlights, I think, a really crucial point. You need to align the tool with your actual needs. Mm -hmm. Understanding when something like anything LLM, this local first approach, is genuinely better for you compared to just using a standard cloud AI. Hmm. That's key. It's not about which is universally best. No. It's about making an informed choice. Thinking about your specific workflow, your data sensitivity, your need for control, your budget, what fits your situation, it forces you to evaluate what you're comfortable with. A very important consideration. And it's good to know this isn't some abandoned project, right? You want to invest time in a tool that's actually going somewhere. Definitely. Is it actively developed? Looks like it. The GitHub repository shows a lot of activity. Thousands of stars, which is like community approval and regular updates being pushed out. Good signs. Yeah. And if you dig into the issue section where people report bugs or ask for features, <laughs> you see the usual stuff. Some, you know, minor hiccups with Docker installations for the more technical setups. A few quirks with APIs, maybe. Standard growing pains for software. Exactly. Nothing that screams abandon ship or this project is dead. In fact, most of the issues are actually feature requests. Ah, people asking for more functionality. Right. Which, honestly, in the open source world is often the best sign you can get. It means people are using it, they like it, and they're engaged enough to suggest ways to make it even better. It points to a healthy, thriving project. That observation about future requests being the main pain point is really telling, actually. Yeah, hell. It usually means the core product is solid and the development team is responsive. People wouldn't bother asking for new features if the basic thing didn't work or if they thought nobody was listening. Good point. So seeing that active development, that engaged community asking for more, it suggests long-term viability. It suggests the tool will likely keep improving, keep getting more stable and more capable over time. That's reassuring if you're considering adopting it. Definitely reassuring. Okay, so let's try and wrap this up. What's the takeaway here for you, the listener, whether you're working alone or in a team? What's the bottom line? I think anything LLM makes a really compelling argument for a different kind of AI experience. One that's more private, much more flexible, and ultimately puts you, the user, back in control. Mm -hmm. You know, the market is just flooded right now with AI apps. Many charge quite a bit for fairly basic stuff or have questionable data practices. Finding something this capable, this open, and this, well, honest about how it works. It feels different, almost suspicious, as one source hinted. Because it seems too good to be true. Maybe, but it looks like it actually delivers. Mm -hmm. So if you've been searching for a solid, legitimate way to chat with your own documents on your own machine without getting locked into subscriptions or worrying constantly about privacy, this seems like a strong contender. Worth trying out, at least. Absolutely. The recommendation from our sources is clear. Download the free desktop version, kick the tires, see if it fits your workflow. There's really nothing to lose before you commit any further. And this whole exploration of anything LLM I think it points to something bigger, a really critical shift that's happening. It's the rise, the growing power of local first AI. Yeah. Think about it for a moment. What happens when you truly own and control your data and your AI interactions right there on your own computer? How might that fundamentally change your relationship with technology? Mm -hmm. Less dependence on big tech clouds, maybe. Perhaps. It could reshape your entire workflow boost your security posture, and maybe even unlock completely new ways to innovate in your specific field, things you couldn't do if you always had to send data out. Interesting. So the final thought for you is this. What kind of really innovative, truly private applications could you build or could you use in your work or life if your data never, ever had to leave your own control? What possibilities does that open up? 